This is Ghost Talk with 187 PI. Sit back and prepare yourselves for an adventure into the paranormal world with host Shelly Robertson and 187 PI Research Team. Ghost Talk is broadcasting live from Ohio's most haunted jail. Learn about their ongoing research at the jail and abroad, investigation techniques, and their personal encounters. Here is your host of Ghost Talk and 187 PI founder, Shelly Robertson. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Ghost Talk Radio. With me is your host, Shelly Robertson, and joining me tonight is Kristen Boyd. Hi, Kristen. Hello. We have an interesting show planned for you tonight, which deals with spirit communications. But before we get started, I want to invite all our listening friends out there tonight to join us in chat at wbhm-db.com, where you can join in on the conversation, share any stories, or ask us any questions you may have. Now, the first topic on this list tonight is using natural abilities to communicate with spirits. Natural abilities are abilities that some people are just born with, or they learn and master them throughout their life. These are also known as the four clairs, which are, we're going to go over all of them here in just a moment. Now, myself and several of our team members have some of these abilities, and we're going to explain what each one is and and what it entails. Probably the most well-known of the four clairs is clairvoyance, and it is considered to be the ability of clear seeing, and it's the opening of your ability of intuitive sight. It is when a person, um, who is also known as a medium, communicates with spirits by means of receiving images. Usually, these images reach the medium through their mind's eye or a mental picture. It will reach them in a way that makes them feel as though they are viewing them with their actual eyes, like they're seeing it and it looks to them like it's right in front of them. The images um, that they see, they can vary. They may receive an image of an object, a spirit person, a symbol, or even an entire scene can be displayed. Well, now, (coughs) clear audience is considered to be the ability of clear hearing. Now, this is when the medium hears sounds or voices that can manifest either within the outside environment so that they may actually hear with the physical ears, or the communication can manifest within their own personal minds. Now, clear sentence is considered to be the ability of clear feeling. This is when the medium can actually sense the presence of the spirits. Now, there are actually a few different ways this may occur. The medium may sense an emotion, a change within the temperature, a breeze, a smell, including a fragrance or scent, the feelings of cobwebs on the body. And you get them cobwebs all the time. Constantly. (laughs) Constantly. Uh, And you can even just get the general sense of feeling there is another presence around you. Yeah, well, this other one here is clear cognizance and it's considered the ability of clear knowing it's when a medium just knows information and the knowledge often comes to them spontaneously however they will know with all their all their soul that the information is 100 percent accurate sometimes this information will come in the form of facts and figures while other times it comes in the form of simply knowing the truth of a situation, a career path, relationship, or about an actual person. In a non-paranormal aspect, this is also known as being an empath. The abilities are basically the same, except that it is focused on a a, a person-to-person basis instead of in the spirit world. Now, a lot of times, people that possess one also possess the other and you know there are a few telltale signs that can give you an idea 
if you possess any of these natural abilities. The list is quite lengthy, so we are just going to go over a few of them, some of the more common ones that may be present and let you know that maybe you have one of these natural abilities. Now, one sign would be that you believe yourself to be a good judge of character and you get either an immediate sense of comfort or discomfort meeting certain people for the first time. This feeling is an overwhelming importance to you, even more than what the person may say or try to portray. Another sign may be that some people seem to glow or radiate good vibes while others around them, their energy fields may seem kind of dim or dull. Maybe you have seen, heard, or felt ghosts or spirits. That's another sign. Another sign could be that you seem to draw attention from people who feel the need to tell you all about their personal history and or discuss their intimate problems. And that's up on first meeting too. Have you ever met somebody that you just meet them and they're telling you their life story within five minutes. I've been in a store where someone walked right up to me, didn't know me, and started telling me their whole life. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> well, some other indications may be that you feel hot or cold spots inside places that do not have ventilations or drafts. You might find yourself consistently drawn to historical sites, certain time periods, or particular cultures. That might be why I just love those old Victorian houses so much. I have obsessions with old buildings as well. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, you may find that you tend to attract other people that share similar intuitions or psychic abilities. And you may have dreams that often come true. You may have had experiences when you were a child such as having an imaginary friend that you possessed very specific knowledge of, such as detailed information about who they were. And you may often feel as if you're being watched or have the feeling that someone's about to enter a room when you know you're the only person there. Ah, well, that happens a lot, you know. And those are by far not the only things to look for. I mean, there's, there's quite a bit more. The, and the list is quite long. And we could probably talk about this for quite some time, the different little oddities to look for. Yeah. So now we're going to touch base on how some of these abilities can be used in other ways to communicate with the spirits. A few of these abilities include channeling, automatic writing, and seances. Transmediumship or tra channeling, that is when the medium withdraws within themselves and they disengage with the conscious and physical world to the point that they give up their conscious control and they allow themselves to be used as a spirit communicator. At this time, the medium will not be consciously aware of the communication they are relaying while they are within this trance. The spirit itself does not always enter the medium's body. But instead, they also can work through the aura of the medium. Everything that happens is done with the medium's permission. So they don't do anything they're not supposed to do. Um, then we talked sort of on the automatic writing or the spirit writing. And this is an energy link that allows you to channel through spirits to communicate intuitively. And it it is usually done when seeking guidance or answers to life questions or any questions, actually. It is conducted within a meditative state, and you must quiet your conscious mind and allow your unconscious to take over. To accomplish this, the form of communication is usually done by using a pen and paper or even a computer to receive the channeled information. It's going to put yourself in a meditative state, you're holding your pen over your paper, and you just let whatever happens, happen. So that's what that is. I've heard actually that there's been books written like that. Yeah, yeah, I've heard the same thing too. Well, there are also seances, which are conducted with a group of at least three people, with at least one of them being a medium, 
or a person who possesses the ability to hear or see spirits. Uh, the group usually forms a circle and the medium attempts to contact the dead through the channeling of the surrounding energy and their own personal abilities. Now this contact can be portrayed through not only the medium's sight or hearing, but also through rapping, which are knocks from the spirits or movement of objects near them in response to the questions being asked. Now if you do not have an ability of your own, there are plenty of other ways to contact the spirit world and seek the answers to the questions you may be looking for. Ah, yes. So next we will be discussing several of these additional methods with a brief description of each. This first one we shall talk about is scrying. Some of you may have heard of it, some of you may not. Scrying itself is an ancient practice of peering into a reflective surface to invoke visions, to uncover truth about not only themselves, but maybe about the world around them, or even maybe somebody they know. It can also be used as a mediumship to those who seek to communicate with the spirit world. Now, the most common reflective surfaces used for scrying include the classic crystal ball, mirrors, crystals, and water. However, flames have also been known to be used within scrying techniques. Now, to invoke visions within these surfaces, the person attempt to do so will typically look at maybe faults, life, uh, light re reflections, um, cloudiness within crystals, colors and ripples of the water, and of course flames within a fire. Now, how you scry, I'll explain to you how you do this. Scrying, it's really, really easy to do, and it just takes practice. The objective is to see things in the mirror, crystal ball, water, or your flame, you know, your fire flames. The first thing you should do is turn off the lights in the room and light some candles. It's best if there are no bright lights because you want your physical eyes to take a back seat to your psychic sight. Take a few minutes, get into a relaxed meditative state, take some slow, deep breaths, and release all of the tension from your body. When uh, you feel calm and centered, you focus on your mirror or your crystal ball or container of water or whatever scrying medium you are using. Don't try to rush the process. Stay very relaxed and keep your eyes slightly out of focus. And that's what the important part is here. To, you don't want your eyes in focus. Don't strain or try to force it. Just let your thoughts flow where they will. And if you wish, you can also communicate with your spirit guides. Ask them questions then watch for any images that appear. You might not see anything the first few times you do this, but keep at it and with practice, you will eventually get the hang of it. The more you practice scrying and other related psychic work, the more quickly you can get into that relaxed state and notice even the subtlest of impressions in the scrying mediums. So let's talk a little bit about the various scrying mediums and how they're most generally used. To start with, we have um, the mirrors. And scrying is, of course, in the mirrors is when you clear your mind into almost a meditated state and you stare into the mirror while relaxing the focus of your eyes. Now. After some time and practice, the surface of the mirror is said to begin, become fluid and um, it can even look like it's been dissolved, but it's not even there, allowing the person gazing into it to begin seeing visions. Now it is believed by many that these uh, visions are said to be more mental than something you see with your physical eyes. However, during my many practice and experiment sessions, I have found this to not be the case. I have found that during group experiment mirror scrying sessions, 
those who can see things 